marched with Malini and another elephant all the way to Euston. At Southampton, ex-world middleweight champion Randolph Turpin was naturally questioned by the press. Yeah, tell me, when are you going back to have another crack at him? Well, I hope next June or before if I can get it. What about the spring? I don't mind, I'll go in the winter as well if I have to. <laughs> Andy, I hear there's a room here going on the stage. What's it all about? Well, I'm going on around. I'm going and scrubbing it. You're going scrubbing it? Yes. Mr. Shinwell, another Queen Mary passenger, was confident about the election. We're going into the fight full steam ahead and we're going to win. One of the many important people back from the States was Mr. Gifford, American ambassador. And I've had a very interesting time, and I think the conferences with Secretary Morrison and the rest of us there have been very successful. But as I said before, I'm very delighted to be back here, and I'm looking forward to the winter here. Thank you very much. Mr. Herbert Morrison, the Foreign Secretary, was asked about Persia. Um, there have been consultations with leaders of the Conservative and Liberal parties as we've gone along in dealing with this difficult and serious matter. I gather from the press that um, we are, the Prime Minister is seeing Mr. Churchill tomorrow, and that would be in accordance with what we've done hitherto. It is, um, it is a situation on which it is desirable that there should be discussions between the party leaders. They also asked him if he'd been surprised by the coming of the election. Not wholly. Um, I heard about it in Ottawa. It, it wasn't wholly a surprise. I had some ideas before I left England as a result of talks with the Prime Minister. Um, and the, uh, in the meantime, I was helped on the road by confident prophecies by various um, journalistic friends for whose help uh, I was and remain eternally grateful. Later, at number 10 Downing Street, Mr. Morrison attended a meeting of the Cabinet. Persia was presumably the chief topic, and Mr. Stokes, leader of the recent mission, was there. The Minister of Defence was present, of course. So was the Chancellor of the Exchequer. The crowd had collected again by the afternoon and saw the arrival of Mr. Churchill who had been invited, together with Mr. Eden, to review the situation at Aberdeen. The news from Persia at this time was very grave indeed. It certainly was a matter for discussion with the leader of the opposition and his deputy. <laughs>